So building blocks. When you're a beginner, or even an intermediate and advanced player, um, there are things that you need to take care of that help your technique. And today we're going to look at four simple exercises that you can do for two to five minutes each that will really help your playing. Uh, the first one that I love to show everybody is the caterpillar. And I just did it for you guys. The reason it's called the caterpillar is because we're going to sneak each finger onto a fret. Finger one, finger two, finger three, finger four, into frets one, two, three, four. And we just go down the strings like this. Now the important thing to realize with this is placement. Um, obviously the strings go this way, the frets go this way. So if our hand is sideways, it's going to cause more trouble than it's worth. Um, we've seen people with their thumb up here. This is great. I use it sometimes when I'm just hanging out by a campfire, strumming or whatever, and holding the uke up. But when it comes to actual technique that you need to play melodies or some chords that might be more difficult later, um, you'll want to get yourself right on your fingertips like this. And watch this. It's just going to be one, two, three, four. One, two, Now what can happen, it happened to me when I started playing guitar and stuff, um, you put your finger here, three, four, one, and you see how I'm already pulling my tendons for my pinky way out of whack there? Um, it's kind of hard to get the feel for being right in the line there. So rather than start with your first finger, try starting with your pinky. Just put it on fret four and then reach back. Put them all in a line and put them all on their fingertips so that they land. If you're too far on top of the fret, it'll buzz. And if you're too far back, it'll also buzz. So right on the fingertips and right behind the fret, right there. Now when you're just right, your thumb is behind just like this, almost just like a vise. It'll come up and then you put those on. That simple. Um, center two, straight up and down just like that and then these two guys come in at sort of a 45 degree angle if, it, if you're looking at your face it looks like a crab just like that okay one two three four then the caterpillar one two I'm just using my thumb down here to pick one single note at a time and then when you play chords same thing here's an F Here's a G7, and here's a C. Keep them right in the line that way. Now here's something that's not in the magazine, just online. You can move up, up fret each time. And it makes it fun to play, because you get the roving caterpillar. It's a great way to explore your technique and also any new instrument you just pick up. So that is the caterpillar. Next up, strumming. Let's take a look at your right hand here, or the hand that speaks, I call it. So if you're left-handed, this would be the one that makes the noise. Up and down. All good strums are made from just going up and down. If we'd say up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then try to figure out which strum goes, it gets confusing. So I like to say something like a phrase. Pass me the saltines. Why don't you pass me the saltines? And then if you've got a strum that has a specific rhythm, you can hear it by just saying the phrase. So I'm going to miss a couple of beats. Pass the, let's see, pass the salt. Why don't you pass the the salt, which is pass, up is silent, the salt, teens, why don't you pass the salt, now try all four of them, pass me the salt teens, why don't you pass me the salt teens, here we go, pass the salt, why don't you pass, once that's in your head, and you can really hear it, boom, 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 Easy rhythm, but you want that motor rhythm to be going, so you got a really steady, steady beat. Because people, I did the same thing when I was in junior high school. Pass 
the salt. Why don't I, I started going backwards and using my arm and all this weird stuff. It's just your wrist and flick it just like you did the dishes and you're taking the water off the side there. Pass the salt. Why don't you pass? If you do your arm, you're going to have all sorts of problems here and it, it'll just, just use that wrist. That's the best way to do it. You throw it around there and you can use your, this finger or all three or your thumb. I don't care which. Whatever's comfy. And then whatever song you're playing. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is a very simple way to play a finger pick. We're going to use your thumb, index, middle, ring. We're just going to go like this. Thumb, index, middle, ring, fourth string, third string, second string, first. So it's like basically down. And try not to bounce or pull too much of the string. Just nice, easy. Move from the big knuckle. So you got this going instead of these guys. In this case, I'm just going to play a C. This is example three in the lesson. Back to C. It's a really pretty way to just listen to the sound of each string that you're making there. And as you get better and better, this will really ground you in the way that you feel your strings and to hear the tone. You can go loud. The best thing is to be able to play loud and soft with almost the same technique. So you're really pulling at the strings and not working very hard. The back of my hand is not bouncing as you notice. You've seen this before. When you're all over the place, it makes it a little tougher. So really use the tips of your fingers and over and over and over. That's a fantastic um, exercise to just center yourself and you can use that on any song that you're working on any chords okay now the last thing I'm going to show you is how to change chords obviously when you change a chord from one to to another here this is just uh, example 4a here we don't think too much about that but I'm gonna stay right on the fingertips just like I did with the caterpillar exercise and here's the real trick play a chord, it's like a vice. I'm actually pushing down on that little spot and I'm lightly putting my thumb behind. Now, when I move, I don't want to be in tension. I actually want to release all of that. So I'm going to let go of the tension and then I'm going to move to the next chord and then I'm going to push down. So even though I just went from fret three to fret one, I have four motions. One, move, hit. So that's four motions. Now here's the F. So I'm going to take that tension, let go completely. I'm going to move to the F, super easy, easy, and then push down and then strum. And then back to the G7, same thing, up, tension, strum, and then let go, move, and tension and strum. It's easier to think of it this way, although we don't actually play this way. Here's a C chord. I'm going to shake out all the tension in between that chord, and I'm going to play the C7. I'm going to let that go and shake out all the tension, and go to the F. Let that go and shake it out, and then the G7. So what we're going to do, we're going to do that shaking out part in our mind, but actually let go of the tension in all your fingers and your thumb, so that goes and then when you do move and there's no tension, you can move like split second to any chord that you want and it doesn't take any effort. So let's take example 4B here. It's going to be a C chord. I'm going to let go and go to an A chord. And if you practice really slow like this and let go all, all the tension, believe it or not, it makes you really fast later on. Here's the A. Then we got a D minor. So I'm going to breathe. 
When I move, it almost becomes one motion after you breathe. Two, three. Use that same line again. And C. One, two, three. Breathe, move. Two, three. And two, three. So every single chord I'm playing, I've actually got a little spot where I leave all the tension behind while I move to the next one. And when you go really fast, now if I play that all with tension, after about an hour, this starts to really hurt. And if you're letting it go in between each chord, you're teaching yourself how to play without tension, get from chord to chord quicker without any troubles, and you don't get tired, okay? So let's take the last example here. This is where we put all the music together. D minor, A minor, E7, A minor, then D minor, A minor, here's an F7, just a fun kind of flamenco move at the end there. So, you can take all the stuff that we're doing, the strumming, um, we can do this. Here's a D minor. I'm gonna use the finger pick. But remember to do all the chord changes. Breathe in between each one. Now here's the strum. Pass the salt, why don't you pass? Oops, I went backwards. D minor. Pass the salt. Why don't you pass the salt? Why don't you pass the salt? Here's a D minor, A minor, F7, E7, A minor. Okay, so that's all the stuff for today's lesson. Uh, I suggest you go practice and enjoy the music. So thanks for hanging with me.